Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our course on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. We are as always in front of our motivating image of this rover on Mars, uh, which for which we hope to be able to design algorithms that can drive such systems autonomously. So last time we had uh, started our discussion on the Lyapunov stability theorems, right? So as we had stated already, these are the uh, rather seminal results in the field of nonlinear control. And um, without the advent of these, it would uh, definitely have been impossible to um, prove stability of nonlinear systems such as uh, you know, these rovers on Mars, quad rotors, drones, electrical power grids, and, and so many other networks of oscillators and things like that. Yeah. So, um, so these are very, very uh, critical and fundamental results. So we saw, of course, the first two of these results, right? We said that uh, we first start with what is called a candidate Lyapunov function, right? And what is a candidate Lyapunov function? It has it is a function with two primary properties that it is a C1 function, because of course we need to take first partials and we want it to be continuous. And uh, second, that it is positive definite in some uh, domain around the origin. Right? So if these two properties hold true, then we said that these functions are candidate Lyapunov functions. And for candidate Lyapunov functions, if these two bullet points are considered. The first one says that if the derivative v dot, which is defined using the standard directional derivative that we saw, uh, and if this v dot is less than equal to zero, or v dot is negative semi-definite, then the origin is stable. And on top of this v dot being negative semi-definite, if v is also decrescent, yeah, this is the third function property that we had discussed. If V is also decrescent on top of V dot being negative semi-definite, then the system is uniformly stable. All right. And then we, of course, started to look at some examples. We first looked at the simple standard harmonic oscillator. We saw that it has, you know, face plane portrait, which is essentially just circles around the origin. And we proved using this uh, v equals x1 squared plus x2 squared by 2, that v dot turns out to be exactly 0, and hence it is negative semi-definite. Right? And this is essentially enough to claim that the origin is, in fact, stable. We also saw that this v was motivated by the face plane portrait, which is essentially uh, circles. Right? That is, if you start at any point, you just follow a circle around the origin, starting at that point. Right. So then we started to look at a slight modification of the system. In fact, a very slight modification of the system. And we started to encounter some serious issues. Right. The first thing to observe was that we tried a couple of different candidate Lyapunov functions. Right. So this, this was the second one. In fact, this particular choice was the second candidate Lyapunov function. But we saw that with this also, we were actually getting v dot is x2 squared by 2 which is positive semi-definite right it's not positive definite remember because it doesn't con contain x1 and we had very explicitly mentioned that if uh, all the states of the system do not appear in the function then it cannot be definite okay? and therefore it is only positive semi-definite but still it's really bad because we only care for v dot being negative semi-definite or negative definite so we were not able to claim anything, right? Because this was probably not the correct Lyapunov function. We don't even know. Now, um, it turns out that even for simple modifications of this harmonic oscillator, which is just division by some element, uh, you know, function of time here, as opposed to this guy, 
uh, it's really, really difficult to solve this system. Yeah, it turns out that it's not easy to actually analytically solve the system in order to conclude stability either. So you can see how life can become really complicated even with simple nonlinear systems and hence uh, the rather, uh, you know, you know, rather difficult question of analyzing nonlinear systems for stability. All right. So this is uh, always been a uh, rather rich area of research and continues to be simply because of this reason. But that every single nonlinear system poses a new challenge as far as control design is concerned, as far as stability analysis is concerned. Right. And because of this, it continues to remain a rather interesting challenge for researchers such as us right now what can be said about this system is that if i if i look at this system very carefully and i look at this particular term as time becomes really large this denominator becomes really large therefore irrespective of what is this x1 this quantity starts to inch closer and closer to zero for very large values of time. This quantity starts to inch closer and closer to zero. And what is this quantity? This is actually the derivative of x2. And so if I look at the phase plane plot, I've actually made a picture here. You can look at this picture. And on the x-axis is x1, on the y-axis is x2. This is how we've always done it, right, in the phase plane portrait. The x-axis displays x1, and the y-axis is x2. Now, what happens for very large time is that x2 dot becomes zero, that there is the, the, these are called, these lines that I've drawn are essentially the, you know, velocity lines in some sense. These are actually, uh, yeah, these are actually called the vector fields. And yeah, these are called the vector field. And essentially it is plotting the right hand side of this equation. And this right hand side actually indicates how the states are going to move. So this is the velocity line. Okay. So if I look carefully at this, uh, so in fact, let me first mark this lecture so I know that I'm actually restarting here. Uh, this I believe is lecture 4.5. So if you look at this uh, vector field, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to plot this vector field which indicates how the states are going to change uh, in this phase plane portrait. Okay. So this is this essentially gives you the velocity lines to see how the states will move. Now, what I have done is I've only tried to plot it for large values of time because what happens at large values of time, this becomes zero. So the derivative of x2 does not is zero. So x2 does not change. And the derivative of x1 is exactly equal to x2. Right. So if you look at this picture, this is exactly what it is. Yeah. On this side, on, on the top side, x2 is positive. Therefore, the derivative is the x1 velocity is positive. So that's what it is. All x1 velocities are positive. And in fact, as you go up, up, up further, these velocity lines are longer and longer. But x2 dot is zero. Therefore, it's actually orthogonal to x2. There is no change in this direction. Okay, there's no change in this direction. And similarly, if I go downwards, x2 is negative. Therefore, all the velocity lines are this way. Okay. And of course, you know, it's like there is no uh, change in x2 again. Okay. Now, what does this indicate? This indicates that as x2 becomes, uh, as time goes to infinity, what you have is that your states keep moving in this direction or in this direction depending on how far you are from the origin in the vertical direction you move accordingly faster or slower but you keep moving in these directions so if i start here i will just move away from zero again i start here i move away from zero so it's clear that this system is not stable from this particular phase plane construction okay but again, this is not conclusive evidence or anything because like I said, phase plane should not be used for concluding stability because I cannot possibly consider all the cases. However, in this case, I have sufficient evidence to see that it is not stable because I can at least see some initial conditions, uh, you know, some states which will end up 
at this x2 and then it will keep moving towards x1 equal to infinity okay so in the x1 direction they'll keep moving to infinity in the positive or the negative direction right therefore the system is not stable okay because uh, whenever your system states just start to go to infinity in any direction in this case in the x1 direction maybe in the x2 direction they remain bounded but in the x1 direction they move to infinity so the system cannot be stable yeah because if i give you any epsilon you need to be able to find a delta such that you remain within the epsilon ball in this case if i draw any epsilon ball like this say i will not remain within it and right? because my states are trying to go outwards like this yeah and this is true for large time okay for small time something else happens we don't even care what happens for small time because i can always keep increasing time and see that this doesn't hold true anymore at large time all right so the system is not stable however i could not find any conclusive evidence through the lyapunov construction and it is not very easy to solve this analytically all right so even for a really really tiny modification this is not even a non linear system this is in fact a linear time varying system we were really stuck all right so this should help you understand the enormity of the stability question okay so next we sort of try to uh, we we constructed a sort of a concocted modified version of this right and that's this we constructed a modified version of this and what is this modified version in this case you have you know x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is the same minus x1 over 1 plus t but i have now added minus x2 over twice 1 plus t okay this is sort of a trick if you may and i choose the same candidate lyapunov function as here it's the same function okay what happens i take the derivative it is x1 x1 dot plus 1 plus t times x2 x2 dot plus x2 squared by 2 where i have taken the derivative of this with respect to time now if i substitute uh, for the derivatives from my dynamics this is x1 x2 plus 1 plus t times x2 x2 dot so this is minus 1 plus t now, so this is a minus x1 minus x2 over 2 plus x2 squared by 2 okay? and what happens you can see that these two cancel out so i'm left with this is x1 x2 minus x1 x2 from here and finally minus x2 squared by 2 from here and then plus x2 squared by 2 which is exactly equal to 0 so it is so i have v dot is less than equal to 0 okay so from this i definitely have stability x e equal to 0 is stable because I took a candidate Lyapunov function. How is this a candidate Lyapunov function? Notice that v is positive definite. It's not difficult to see that v is positive definite. Why? Why? Because if I take t greater than equal to 0, right? So for all t greater than equal to 0, of course, right? So for all t greater than equal to 0, what do I have? If I plug in any non-zero x1, x2, non-zero state, yeah. So if if x is non-zero, at least x1 or x2 is non-zero. Therefore, v is always positive. This is a positive definite function, right? So if v was positive definite, it is c1 continuous, and v dot is negative semi-definite. So I have satisfied all the requirements for stability. Okay. So the now the question is: Is the system uniformly stable? at the origin okay so we notice that v is not decrescent why notice that this is a continuously increasing function of time okay so if i claim 
I cannot ever claim that V is less than or equal to phi norm X because where phi is a class K function. Why? Because phi uh, is just a function of the states, right? So if you give me any such phi, what I will do is for that fixed phi, I will fix a state x. Okay, some very small value of the state. It doesn't matter. I fix any particular value of the state. So the right hand side becomes a constant. Once I fix x, the right hand side is a constant. But notice the left hand side is an increasing function of time. Right? x1, x2 are constant, so no problem, just as the right hand side, but this is an increasing function of time. So I will keep pushing up time. Right? I will keep pushing up time. Right? I will keep pushing up time so that the left hand side can never be less than the right hand side. Because the right hand side was some constant, it doesn't matter how large it is. I can always push the t larger and larger to achieve v greater than phi in orthonomics. Okay, so therefore v is not decrescent, and therefore uh, implies well, implies x c equal to zero, not uniformly. stable all right it's not uniformly stable this is a rather interesting result right so we have a system here which is being proven to be stable it is actually a modification of the harmonic oscillator but not just one term one time modification but i also added some additional state term right so it turns out that this is stable but not uniformly stable Okay, at least I cannot claim uniform stability with this particular Lyapunov function. Okay, so let's be careful here. We cannot prove uniform stability with this particular Lyapunov function. It may be possible to prove it with something else, but in general, it is uh, it's not too difficult to see that uh, the stability will not be uniform. Yeah, because what happens is that this term. That is all these nice terms. For example, this term. See, if you notice, this system was unstable. So the stability is obtained due to this additional term. This is like a damping term. Yeah, because until this term was missing, the system was unstable. So this damping term sort of helps us get stability in this case. Now this damping term becomes smaller and smaller with time increase. Okay. So therefore, the stability property is sort of time dependent yeah it will not be possible in general to prove uniform stability in this case all right so anyway so that's an aside but the point is with our lyapunov theorems we cannot prove uniform stability we can only prove stability for this particular system all right excellent so i think we have some idea of stability and uniform stability and we've seen some examples so now we can move forward to the next uh, sort of results. Right? So, so in fact, I should actually write here. Yeah, should write here lecture 4.5. Right. So the next result talks about local asymptotic stability or just asymptotic stability. Yeah. So the next two results are local asymptotic and local uniform asymptotic. Okay. So, what do you require? Earlier we had only talked about semi definiteness of v dot. Here we make it more stringent, right? So, we have stronger and stronger properties as we go downwards in these bullet points. All right. So, uh, in this case, we have we require that v dot is negative definite. Okay. So, if v dot is negative definite for a candidate Lyapunov function, then the origin is locally asymptotically stable. Similarly, if I add the decrescence property to the negative definiteness, then I get uniformity. Yeah, so if v dot is negative definite and v is decrescent, then 
the origin is locally uniformly asymptotically stable so we also use acronyms right very commonly to denote these properties because these are, get rather long set of words so we don't always want to write them so we call uniform stability us asymptotic asymptotic stability as uniform asymptotic stability uas okay so so we have specialized from stability to asymptotic stability by adding negative definiteness in place of negative semi definiteness and similarly from uniform stability to uniform asymptotic stability yeah just this negative semi definiteness gets replaced by negative definiteness okay so this is the difference all right so let's see again some examples yeah let's see some example so uh, if i take again this system um, yeah let me try to construct a nice example which will of course help us prove some nice properties let's see yeah let me so suppose i have a system which looks like this right um and i want to uh, do something i want to take an interesting lyapunov function v x1 x2 is equal to um say half x2 plus x1 squared Now, let me see if this. Mm. So, um, V X one X two as half x1 plus x2 squared plus half x2 squared uh, no i think should be x1 squared right so, so then i take the derivative of this guy so it should be evident that this is positive definite why is it positive definite all right so question is why is it positive definite so if i want to make this let's look at where this can be zero this can be exactly zero uh, if and only if x1 exactly zero and x1 plus x2 exactly zero which means x2 exactly zero so this origin is the only place where this function can be exactly zero everywhere else it is strictly positive so therefore this is a positive definite function as per our definitions so if i compute v dot i will get x1 plus x2 times x1 dot plus x2 dot and plus x1 x1 dot okay. and so this becomes uh, x1 plus x2 let me see if this works yeah and this x1 dot is x2 and x2 dot is minus x1 minus x2 plus x1 x2 okay so um let's see so this is equal to x1 plus x2 times minus x1 and if i let me 
sort of keep it as this x2 minus x1 minus x2 plus um, x1 times x1 plus x2 minus x1 squared. So I have basically written this guy as this just by writing x2 as x1 plus x2 minus x1 and then I will club this guy to this. So this will give me x1 plus x2 times x1 plus x2 minus x1 minus x2. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. I want to make this slightly different. So what I will do is um, let's see. I will make this. I'll make my life a little bit easier. Uh, let me say this is. I mean, I can always change the candidate function here, and that will give me. Um, What will that give me? Yeah, I, I think I should have taken uh, something like half x1 or something. So that would have helped. So what I will do is make a slight modification here. All right, I'll make a slight modification here. I will add a k. Here, and I will see where all the k's propagate. K is here. K is here. Similarly, K is here, K is here, right, again, the K continues here, and the K continues here, yeah. Just I'm adding this k just so I can have a little bit more of a control on what shows up here, right? So in this case, what I will do is instead of uh, I will take a k here and I will subtract a k here. So and then I will have a k again here. So this becomes x1 plus k x2 right minus x1 minus x2 okay so this is still uh let's see let's see this is still a bit of a problem uh, because i still want a negative uh in the x1 i would still like a negative in the x1 hmm. so i'm just trying to manipulate some of this uh, <laughs> Uh, numbers so that we can get an appropriate uh, so that we can get an appropriate sort of equality here okay. so so that's the idea here so suppose I make it I apologize so this is say 1 by 4 so this becomes 1 by 2 and this becomes 1 by 2 this becomes 1 by 2 and this becomes divided by 2. So this also becomes divided by 2. So what I get here is k x1 plus x2 times minus x1 by 2 minus 1 minus k x2. 
okay and this is and i want this to be actually equal to k x1 plus x2 so let me sort of write this as 1 minus k k x1 plus x2 minus this is x1 over twice 1 minus k twice 1 minus k plus x2 right and all i now need is that k be less than 1 so that this is positive and i need this quantity to be equal to k so i want 1 over 2 1 minus k is equal to k right so if i satisfy these two right if i can satisfy these two this is simply equal to 2k minus k squared equal to 1 implies k squared minus 2k plus 1 equal to 0 right so if can i actually satisfy these two is the question so this is but this is not i'm not sure this is possible because this is going to give me k equal to 1 so this is not good okay so this is not good yet okay um, so anyway what i will do is i will so this construction is right in spirit yeah you can see that this construction is right in spirit the only thing is i have to be uh, careful about choosing these constants okay so what we will do is we will continue next time and we will actually uh, choose these constants appropriately so that we can claim asymptotic stability all right so anyway so what did we do today was to sort of look at the next two definitions which is asymptotic stability and uniform asymptotic stability and we are in the process of working out the example to prove asymptotic stability using a lyapunov construction all right this is what we'll continue next time thank you very much <laughs>